So we are back. It's late May, almost June, and I'm working on the Mirage again finally since uh, last time was March. So I have the fuel pump mounted here. I got the bracket. Um, there's four bolts. You can probably barely see that, but four bolts and four nuts. Nuts are on the inside, and this is much, much sturdier than it was before, much more secure and safe. Um, I've also rerouted this fuel line here, <clears throat> so that's the outlet obviously, and I've got new fuel line that's kind of going to loop around here and then make its way to the, the pickup and uh, pre-filter. Uh, as far as the wiring goes, I am going to not drop the light and probably follow this wiring here and then just plug into here previously it kind of went through this grommet under the seat um, I don't really like that so I think I'll just follow this back to the, the battery in the rear corner and then just tape it up real nice in this kind of loom of wires and the battery uh, relocation thick gauge stuff so here is oh the other thing I also got all the the factory studs and the mounts I was looking for that took probably a good month um, but here is what I'm thinking um, I do not have anywhere to put this camera at the moment so I will set it there so the factory mounts here are the sleeves that came with the these bushings that I explained in an earlier video and what's nice about these is they're actually tapered on one side so when this is mounted up here um, this sleeve this bushing actually is a nice really tight fit on the stud the factory stud As the factory stud is thick and then it kind of gets thin tapers down which is by design. The other side of the bushing is um, tapered. So it only fits one way. So it's going to ensure a nice tight fit. And there goes the light. Ah, I'm just not having good luck with equipment these days. So here is my thought process. I got to cut all this out of here. Like I mentioned in another video, all this extra metal, cut it all out, grind it, and essentially we're limited by the drive shaft sits here, right? It's bolted in here. This is this is a fixed angle, it's a fixed position. So wherever this last shaft piece bolts to the diff, that's what we have to kind of work around. Like we can't raise or lower these mounting points this can't just be oh I'm gonna put this up here I can't put this down here because that's gonna really mess up your rear pinion angle so the good thing is the angle that this is at now is where it needs to be and if you remember I had this quote-unquote spacer here so when it where it sits like this, it's essentially the perfect pinion angle and that's all set. So what I basically need to do is replicate this. And that would essentially mean we're gonna have this somewhere um, somewhere right in here. Not here. It's gonna be here, a little bit lower. And what I'm thinking is that I do square tube steel like it is now on an angle, like a triangle. So point here, point here. Weld that in, and then I have a second piece where um, there's nuts welded on the inside so that I can screw and bolt this to that secondary piece. So we'll have a second piece with nuts welded in, and then we'll weld that to whatever is up here. And then that way we can just unscrew this, remove it, um, or when we're lifting this into place, this can kind of float around inside uh, the subframe. 
loosely and then we kind of get it into place <clears throat> that's when we can bolt it in and that's how that's going to work out so i think uh that's kind of what i'm going to work on next but i also have to keep in mind um, these so i got two of these as well and I don't know if I'm going to utilize them like this, bolt this through the factory floor. That wouldn't be a bad idea because I need these washer pieces. It's, it's how the, the bushing kind of fits, like it rests inside of it. So I'm also keeping in mind that I'm going to run the bracing from here all the way up front. So minimum I need this end piece here I can just cut the rest off and then just use this as the washer spacer best case I can just um, bolt it in and then use it like the factory has it on the eclipses so let me I'm actually gonna fit this up like so and see how this fits so the other thing is, because this is tapered, this is it's not going to slide all the way down. So the problem here I see is that this is already going to be, look how low this is going to be already off of the factory uh, floor pan. So, hmm. And this is how it was, um, you know, from the beginning. It just, this is how it sits in here. And I was like, well, maybe we can't, why can't we lift it up? And then it comes back to that rear pinion angle in the drive shaft. You just can't because on this chassis, this Mirage, this is just how it fits in here. So, hmm. Whether or not we use this portion, I don't know. That's to be determined. But what I do know is this has to essentially sit um, just like that. So... I'm going to cut this all out of here. That's the next step. Um, and then I'll show you some of these other pieces I've got here. All right, here's some of our parts we have. We've got the Evil Energy black nylon braided hose, 10AN. Uh, I've had good luck with that in the past on fuel stuff. Um, you've got your 10AN caps here because sometimes you got to cap stuff off when you're working on the fuel system and not have to drain the tank. Here is our Volk Metalcraft uh, Active Tow Eliminator Kit. I do have a kit on there now, but that's from 1999. So I figure I'll redo that, um, weld it correctly, and that way we also have additional tow adjustment with these. Uh, just in case we can't get it perfectly uh, aligned. Then we have the rear uh, diff stud here, mounting stud, um, because I don't have OEM on mine, I just have a hardware store one. This we'll do at a later point once we get the subframe mounted. We can kind of go back in and mess with that. Um, here's those stoppers I mentioned um, in another video that I was missing. Um, Looks like flywheel bolts are also the uh, subframe stud mounting bolts. Here are those stoppers. So on this, these actually sit on this um, stud. So there's a top one and then a bottom one in between kind of sandwiching the mustache brace. So those I never had. We'll get those in there at some point. Various just bolts, washers. Here's the eccentric um, bolt for the rear toe on the driver's side that was messed up. And then I also got from RTM Racing the diff mustache bar um, polyurethane or whatever this material is. Um, mounts and the sleeves and everything. So same as the rear subframe, now we have the matching rear diff mustache mounts. But again, we're just going to break this project into pieces and 
kind of just do one thing at a time. Otherwise, we'll have parts everywhere and nothing's going to line up. So, that's the parts. So, here's where we're at. I finally was able to cut all this out of here. And what's interesting, you see a lot of surface rust under here. Um, and that's from 20 some years ago. So, the car was never really driven in the rain or the snow, but. Um, this time around we're probably going to do some uh, weldable primer, that way I can spray all this and then get the metal in place and then weld it and not have to worry about bare metal under the frame. I've got the fuel pump mounted here. That's all looking good. Uh, I haven't touched the other side yet, but um, this is kind of what we're looking at. Not much to see or say, um, but I'll probably cut the, um, the template out of cardboard and then uh, see how it fits in there and then uh, go from there. But just want to give you a look at some of the metal we removed. I'll probably leave this, this part here just because it's really not in the way at all and I've cut everything else kind of around it. So, that's that. So here's where we're at. I've got everything prepped, ready for welding. Um, and by welding, I mean there's a few spots I gotta fix. Um, this one I spent a good 30 minutes grinding down all the, the weld I had in there and the old washer. I'm going to fix that hole. I'm going to clean that hole up on came on the other side. <clears throat> There's just, for some reason, I decided to um, either torch it or cut it like that. I don't, I don't know why. And there's a spot over here we got to weld a little plate to just to reinforce that area. And then also on the passenger side right here, we're just going to basically cover up the hole with a plate, reinforce it a little bit. I've got the old um, active toe assembly end links out of here. So basically, if you understand the original, this lighting is just not great. Uh, the original Mitsubishi design was that this was bolted in to the control arm here. Um, let me grab the other one. It's a better visual. And you can see this has rubber on it. So the rubber allowed movement, even though it was bolted in. So under braking or acceleration, you would essentially have um, active toe. So it would either increase uh, toe or decrease it, depending upon what you're doing. Obviously, you want consistency when drag racing, autocrossing, road racing, etc. Um, so back in the day they made just these these washers that you could buy and basically uh, weld them to the control arm so that fixed the toe. This thing wasn't going to move anymore um, but the problem is you only have uh, so much toe adjustment with the factory eccentric bolts and washers. So enter the Volk uh, Metalcraft end links here. These are all fine steel, probably I'm assuming it's stainless steel, at least this piece. Um, although probably all is. I don't really remember at this point in time. But essentially now we can hammer this in and then weld it to the control arm and in addition to the factory eccentric bolts now we have additional toe adjustment pretty much I mean infinite toe adjustment and yes you have to do it you have to drop this down in order to remove and adjust this but you only have to remove this lower uh, control arm here just one bolt here this comes down and then you can pull this out of here so it's not too bad, 
and that's that. So I'm get the welding done. And then as far as these go, the mounts, I cut out that box steel like I mentioned. And this is essentially going to get welded in this fashion, something like this. So nice triangle mount here. And then I am going to have to figure out where these are going to exactly bolt to. I think I'm going to have to either make like an extension um, piece off of here or put one nut inside of here. Uh, it's really to be determined. I've looked at this a hundred different ways and I think it's going to be pretty much flush with this frame rail. <clears throat> just like this maybe a little bit lower um, but that doesn't allow me to put anything in the corner of this frame rail so it can't be a stud and it can't be a nut and this has to be positioned at a certain um, in a cer certain angle here so you can still get the bolts in and out uh, so I think this has to be something like that so you can get this bolt out and then access to the back one and then access to this one so it's a little bit of a, um, a puzzle if you will but I think I have a plan for at least two of the three holes I'll just have to figure out that third one uh, I might do like just a stud on one of them and then nut from the bottom side but that's uh, I don't know it's the last piece of the puzzle really um, all the angles are looking good. The alignment's looking fine. I've got a drive shaft stub in here just to verify the angle's okay when this is all um, jacked up. And there is a sweet spot. Like obviously you can't go too low, you can't go too high um, because it affects the angle of the drive shaft. So there's there's a sweet spot um, right kind of where I was talking about somewhere in here and yes that will make the um, stud kind of sit much lower than this but it is it just is what it is I mean you're putting a completely different subframe into this chassis so I'm gonna clean up those spots that I uh, didn't do so well on 20 years ago get those all looking good and then once that's done I'm going to do the um, the weldable weld through primer I'll probably um, paint in here before the bushing goes in and yeah we're almost there I don't think I'm gonna to have to touch the rear diff mount the bracket um, right away right now because the alignment is is okay you know we're not we're not um, like cockeyed one way or the other and a large part of that is the the diff mount because if that's angled it's going to angle your entire subframe so we'll see how it goes all right everybody progress has been made so i've got the pump mounted here that's solidly mounted to the uh body here and then we've got the outlet to the front, kind of looping around and then going that way. And then we've got a new line that's going to pop in here. And uh, that way we're kind of out of the way of all this, how it used to be. So I've got all the old support structure cut out. I mean, this is just basically like, you know, this hold it up like that so that's all gone I think my new plan is um, it's gonna sit something like this let's just stick that there for a minute so two inch tube steel box steel mounted uh, you know this way just like that 
and then I also got the old subframe oh man bushings cut out of here which was kind of a pain I spent probably three hours today um, cutting these out and then cutting these out getting these ready for the new kit and then also um, spent quite a bit of time if you remember in one of the last videos um, die grinding all the old weld out of there that I did a long time ago and now I'm just have to go in there and kind of touch it up and fix the the shape of the hole and all that and the missing pieces just kind of weld that back in there so essentially this is going to get pushed into here flush and then weld the perimeter and this is going to be our toe adjustment number two toe adjustment number one is still going to be in the factory spot with the bolt so you get a couple you know a degree or two maybe toe uh, with this and if that's not enough we can fine tune it with uh, this the reason I went with these is because previously I just had the factory um, end links here, which are, are really heavy, and those have the rubber at the end. So when the, the theory is when you break and accelerate, this can uh, kind of give you active toe almost to an extent. Um, but drag racing and all that kind of stuff, we don't want that which is why this was originally welded to this um, but not good so we're going to fix that with this one uh, fix that and then these so these I had to um, torch out actually just a map torch here, um, the center piece and I wiggled it out with the vice grips pulled it out of there and then I used a sawzall to cut two slots on the remaining um, piece, which is basically a metal liner and then rubber inside. Let me see if we can find what it looked like here. So basically it was these two large chunks of metal in here on each side, one there, one over here. Uh, I cut it to split it and then it, I can work it out and I use an air hammer to clean this up and a die grinder to get this all decent. And now the new um, poly bushing or you know this material, it should slide in there perfectly by hand. And then there's a top hat piece that kind of that's your that's your spacer. So we're gonna use that for our, our spacer on top. And what I really like about these is, if I can find it, um, okay, they're over here. Their bushing here is tapered, and one side is larger than the other. So this only goes in one way, and it gets tighter as you... Um, you know it kind of seals it together it expands a little bit but if you'll see I don't know if it was this one or the other one um, but essentially or no not never mind not in the bushing I'm an idiot in the, um, the stud so let me find a stud okay so the stud, it stops on one side, and that figures, and the other side, this is not a good example because you'll notice all the shavings everywhere because it's just been like non-stop uh, metal everywhere shavings. Where is that other one? Here we go. I had to sand um, this down just to get some of the paint off. But you'll see one of these sides it stops on. And 
and the other side it actually slides into. So this would be our top side, and that would drop down like that. And I still am not 100% sure on how I'm going to attach this to the tube, the square box steel, because uh, it's kind of going to sit in there weird. I might have to either A, drill new holes, or B, I don't know, I don't know yet. But I'm going to have to somehow get nuts inside of the tube steel or a second piece of uh, steel. So we can have like the fixed welded nuts that the bolts grow into. And then finally, once that is all done, and then you have your little your mount dropped out in here, then this factory piece here, uh, like a big giant washer, kind of locks everything in place, and then your lock nut goes on the bottom. Perfect. Um, I don't know if I'm going to attach this like I mentioned. Um, we'll just have to see. But that's where we're at for now. So a lot of good progress. Um, there's going to be some prep work going on here. Just to clean all that up. And I did get uh, some Seymour PBE Weld Through Primer. So I'm going to be able to coat all this stuff um, and then put the metal, the steel, and then weld it and then not have to worry about um, rust behind it because it's not prepped at all or coated. So we're getting there. And then this I still have to swap out the rear diff because this is still pretty loose. And then here is the other side that I have to clean up a little bit um, but for the most part everything I just have to weld clean this up and then weld maybe a plate across it but yeah most part pretty happy making good progress I'd say another I don't know 8 to 16 hours probably a good weekend and this thing will be pretty uh, pretty close to done so we'll see what happens next We've got the nice <clears throat> end links, the toe adjusters in, and all the welding is done. The eccentric bolts, I fixed all those. I've got the subframe bushing here installed with the sleeve and the top. And I think what I'm going to do is. Drop everything possible and then continue with the video. Okay, so we've got our tube steel here that I cut, box steel two inch, and it's gonna sit something like that. I don't know exactly how, but my thoughts are I can somehow get a nut or bolt in there and maybe drop down the bolt and then just use a nut on this side if i can snake a little a bolt in there and then kind of make the hole bigger than the bolt and then weld the bolt to the box steel and then same over here similar concept it looks like i can uh, drop a bolt down through the frame using that little hole and same thing kind of make the hole a little bit wider than the bolt and then fill that gap with uh, weld and then weld the bolt to the frame and then use another nut there so that would take care of that and then the last one is a little bit more tricky this is never going to stay uh, that one's a little bit more tricky because it's in just a very awkward spot. You can kind of see, not really. Uh, you can kind of see, not really. Nope. So that is right there. 
fix the light. So that one, I don't know if that's going to work with, because if this is going to be welded here, I'm going to have to make a little extension piece or something that would hold a nut, and then I can use a bolt on this final hole. Uh, I think that's where we're going to go. That's kind of yeah, the only way of doing this, really. So, let's see how it turns out, I guess. Uh, unless I did this wider, but then it's more weight. I mean, you really don't need more than two inch. All it's doing is, is holding the front of the subframe up. I don't like this either. There's kind of a, I'm going to have to hit the, pound this body out with the hammer from inside and get it more flush. But this is, a, this is an ideal fitment right here. But yeah, I think that's kind of the plan. It's the best I can come up with. Because obviously if you weld anything to this part, it's going to be difficult. You're not going to be able to get on top of the the box steel, that's kind of how I had it originally. And you're only really welding it to one point, so that's kind of not great. So I think uh, two studs, two nuts, and then one bolt on the back, I guess, is what we're going to do. Because there's no way to get a nut in there and weld it. Um, yeah. So we'll see how it goes, but other than that, I said everything is, is fit great We've got everything else I got the stub here just for fitment sake and angle the drive shaft angle looks fine just like it did originally so that's kind of where we're at you're, you're limited by this you can't really make it any uh, different of an angle up or down it's just really wherever your drive shaft is is kind of situated that's what you have to base it off of the other side this looks fine too same concept uh, we got obviously going to measure everything three times and make sure the left and right is good as well as front and back just to make sure we're all in alignment that way as best we can i did measure from this stud to one of these uh, frame holes up here and they are equal on both sides, so that is, uh, I mean, as close as we're really going to get. But I like how this turned out. This uh, little toe thing here, and then this plate I just welded in for extra strength. And if you put a jack under there, it's not going to collapse like it did before. So, yeah, that's it. Let's get working on it. Okay, guys. More hours put into the project, but we're almost there. So this is going to be butted up to the body. Uh, it's also going to be welded up here. And then it will also be welded back on that corner. You can kind of see. Uh, what you'll also see is I finally figured out the mounting situation. So I've got one factory bolt here. One factory bolt back here, and I'll use the passenger side for uh, visual here. But we've got a nut welded inside, so that I figured out to do that. And then this one, we have an opening, so we're going to weld a nut just like that. No big deal. This is uh, this is called the pistol, the pistol mount, because <laughs> it looks like a cut off pistol a little bit so pretty exciting pretty exciting um, the uh, the studs oh I thought these inserts these bushings were tapered but they're not I don't know what made me think that but either way they work and then um, just energy suspension lube on it and then pushed it right in uh, when you push it in it actually expands the poly so it, it basically tightens it to the subframe. So that's looking good. We've got our spacer on top, which is perfect. And then uh, that's pretty much it. 
Um, the only other thing, you might see this two inch uh, box steel just sitting in the middle of nowhere. Um, but I decided to use that as the factory mounting point for this. So that will also have a nut and a bolt. And that will mount perfectly like that. Just like factory. And then keep in mind, this is all parallel with, uh, with the ground pretty much and um, the frame. So we're not looking at any kind of crazy angles. And the other thing was, this is exactly two inches. So I'm like, well, I've got two inch box steel, so we're gonna make them out. Now keep in mind, once this is installed, this kind of holds everything in place. Um, but this point right here, we're going to use this as that chassis brace, if you remember. So we're going to do some kind of washer and then a, a, a drop down, one, in, one inch to 1.25 inch or whatever. And then we're going to do a piece of tube steel all the way from here to the front control arm. We're going to mount it right here to strengthen up the chassis a little bit, make it a little bit more rigid. Interesting to see how much that improves it, but... Um, I saw that somewhere and obviously there's nothing for this car, but the concept is the same. We're just going to, um, you know, go from here to there and then probably from the front to the other front, I'm assuming. So probably from here to, you know, here or something cross stability and then front and rear. So, um, that's what we're, that's where we're at. This doesn't really look too dumb, you know, it's, it is what it is. I mean, we're working with a, a chassis that has limitations, if you will, and it really wasn't made for this. So I really like this um, a lot better than the last, and obviously this can be detached from the mount. That's the biggest thing, the biggest reason. Because before I just had a stud welded to this, and then this was welded to the frame. So there's no way to service it, there's no easy way to drop the subframe because it, it, it doesn't want to come straight down if you're not taking the whole thing out. So if you just want to loosen this and drop the, the front part for whatever reason, uh, you need something, you need to be able to remove this from the frame, just like the factory. And that's, you know, that's why they did it that way, I'm assuming. So that's all I got so far. I'm going to weld it up, uh, paint it all with the... Um, Weldable primer or weld through primer, spray it all down good, and then weld it, and then do like a top coat of this black that I've got. Like this kind of, it's a little rubberized, I guess it's advertised, just paint over any kind of surface rust. And then um, do that here too, as you can see, those are all painted the same black paint. But this looks good, it's totally in line, perfect. Interesting to see uh, what the toe comes out as so Once this is all done, that'll be the next video just the alignment again and settings and how many threads and all that stuff, but Yeah, we're looking good. We're making progress. So We are there we are finally there I spent so many hours on this the past week It's insane But we've done it. I've got everything lined up both sides. I've got bolt here, bolt in the back side. Let's see if we can get that on the camera. Alright, so there. And then I've got a stud right there. Because um, that's kind of what my plan was. I should do a stud right there in the corner. Because um, I didn't know how thick the material was. But I actually did three bolts over here because um, the material was good enough, thick enough over here. So I just tapped it out. And unfortunately, I already started grinding the whole bigger on the driver's side. So I had to do a stud. So we're done. We're there. It's sitting on its own. Everything is perfect. Um, this bottom brace here. So that's kind of how that's going to sit. Uh, nice and parallel with everything else. And then we're going to put that chassis bar, basically, is going to be the nut for this. So the bar is going to come down a bit, maybe an inch. And uh, depending upon how low that really is, I might have to kind of work it up 
up here, just elevate it and then run it all the way to this front control arm mounting point. So we'll see how it looks, but that's kind of the plan at this point. Um, I'll probably stick a nut on the back side of this, so just do a bolt and a nut to hold that in. It did tap alright, but I mean, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but the pump's in, the lines, I have the lines made, all I gotta do is hook them up. And now I gotta run the wire to the battery, put the drive shaft on. I'm gonna hold off on the diff, because um, I don't really know the condition of the one I want to stick in there. Like the seals could be bad, leaking, I don't know. So I think I'm going to send that one out, get it rebuilt, and then swap it in here. We're almost there. I've got this all mounted up. It's looking pretty good, parallel with the ground, pretty much. Um, I've got this all tightened down. I've got the toe adjusters, eccentric bolts, uh, zeroed out. Um, I can either adjust those or the adjustable end links. I'm pretty much there. All I've got to do is weld up the rest of the exhaust and bolt it on, and that's it. There's just a couple spots that I had to cut and realign, and I'm going to do that and weld it up, and uh, we're in business again. I've already got the drive shaft in. I started the car, make sure it ran. Uh, I got the manifold in, radiator back in, that's all filled up. Um, everything's kind of good to go. So I put in a ton of hours um, these past couple weeks just to get this to this point. The diff, uh, I didn't know if I mentioned, but I'm going to leave this in here um, and just send out the other one because I don't know. to be opening up a whole box of worms. Um, with the other one that's been sitting for 20 years or whatever. But uh, this is what we're looking at here. This is all coming together. I've got um, that rear stud over there, and then a bolt here with the welded nut inside the frame, the new frame, basically. And then we've got our brand new nut here, an eccentric washer, and then our other bolt. I don't know if you can see back up in there, but there she is. Uh, so there's like a little ear on the um, new frame that I welded in and the same thing as a nut and welded inside of there. I could have threaded the tapped out this stud, but I stupidly kind of ground it out before doing so. Uh, Cause if you'll see on this one, I actually was able to tap this and just use the threads instead of uh, doing any welding. So this is all here. This is looking good. This is, it's, it's more solid than it's ever been. So I'm super excited. It's a lot more um, stiff and solid, even in this state, than it was before. So pretty happy about that. Um, there is some flex in the floor, just because the floor pan's so thin. So I may or may not do like an interior um, piece of steel or something connecting these two um, boxes to be determined but the fuel pump is in and the lines are ran this is all primed and good to go I know they say keep it to like six foot maximum but um, this is actually pretty much uh, level with the center of the tank but this input line kind of wraps around and it kind of goes above the tank and then it spits out over here into the pre-filter and then it comes down again actually higher almost horizontal with the tank again and then to the sump so didn't have any issues priming or running or filling up i don't foresee any problems with the length of the lines and all that um this amazon 10 gauge wire i think it's like silicone wire um, and it's made for like stereo systems and all that. So it's got a ton of, um, what's the word? Not threads, but the wires, many individual wires. So it's very flexible. It's not stiff. And I just had to use a couple washers because the gold plated, whatever crimp connectors were too big for the studs on the pump, but that's good to go. And then our output line, same thing. It kind of loops around. Maybe I'll shorten this 
with like a 45 degree fitting or a 90 or something. But for now, it just kind of sits in there, goes straight out and then loops and then runs to the front of the car that way. So super impressed, super happy everything turned out the way it did. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but I'm going to try to run um, some kind of brace from here to the front control arm. I just don't want it to hang down even further than this, but we'll see how that works out. And I got my Amazon rivet gun. Um, some of these went in okay. I'm going to have to get some better drill bits because some broke and didn't go in correctly. But for the most part, the rivets, I mean, they're in there pretty well. And this thing doesn't really move around. So that was the right move there. And that's about it. So I'm going to weld up the exhaust and pretty much drive it off the lift. Clean everything, get all nice and clean again. All the metal shavings and dirt and oil and grease. And then I'm going to do the toe measurements and see kind of where that sits. And then the final step would be obviously just adjusting the toe. Uh, I can already see just visually this side. I, well, apparently you're supposed to be able to just look at the back and then kind of align it with the front tire wheel. And that kind of gives you an idea of toe in or toe out. Um, it's kind of hard to tell on camera and in person. It's not sideways or anything. And the passenger side. Here's kind of how this one looks. The camber kind of looks a little excessive, but it should be right around two degrees, one and a half, somewhere in there. So we'll see what it comes out to be. But yeah, I'm super pumped. Cars will be running and driving by uh, next few days. So. I'm going to swap out this wire, get rid of the stain, um, steel wire, get some stainless wire in there. Our Amazon Yes Welder, stainless steel, solid core. And uh, yeah, finish this up, get the two V-bands on, and Bob's your uncle. So we'll see how it goes. So I lost the oil filter. I put on a new Amsoil uh, EA15K20. As you can see, the threads are kind of um, a bit lower on this one compared to my current one. And for whatever reason, the stud on the oil filter relocation um, just wasn't secure and it didn't really thread in very well. So I have a few OEM solutions on the way. Uh, I'll update when I get that, but I'll show you what happened. So I was pulling out of the driveway here and you'll see this big old path here look at this right here it dropped oil filter was just sitting there on the ground luckily it was late at night so from there to here this is about three seconds and you see I stopped right there on the right and then just pushed it I shut it off and then I pushed it back just rolled it backwards and Everything was fine. I put I put it back out with the old oil filter and um, just got it running with more oil. But I've got a few solutions on the way. One is a BMW uh, threaded oil filter stud, and the other one is a Nissan, which should be both 20 by 1.5. So I'll see how it works. But luckily, no damage. Um, engine was just shut off immediately. So thankfully. Now, now I gotta pull it in and we're gonna do the tow uh, measurements and all. All right, car's running, driving. I'll do one final um, walk around here. As you can see, um, we have the alignment set up with my favorite string method. And uh, subframe is in and good. Everything is looking nice. Let me turn this light up so we don't have that flicker. Um, yeah, super happy with how it turned out. Uh, seems to drive a lot uh, better, or I just haven't driven the car in a long time, but much more planted. So as far as this goes, here is my measurements I did on the ground. Um, I pretty much guessed on the thread count with the rear end links and came out pretty close. So driver's side rear, it's only a quarter inch toe out, which is not bad. 
and passenger side's only an eighth inch toe out. So, uh, pretty close. I think I'm going to try setting it just to zero, see what happens. Um, passenger front, this is about two, um, what is this, two a so a quarter inch um, toe out in the front. Driver's side is a little bit more. It's actually uh, quite a bit off. So this is only one in it. I measured, so three inches to the hub. And I measured one and a half inches on the front side of the wheel and then one and seven eighths to the rear. So there's, we're actually, well, we can go look at it actually. It makes more sense. You'll actually be able to see it pretty well. So you can actually see the front is actually kind of pointed outwards compared to the rear. And, uh, yeah, just got to make that adjustment there. One and seven eighths, yeah, which doesn't make sense. I think it's backwards on my notes here. Or am I just looking at this wrong? So the front of the wheel is only an inch and a half of um, distance from the rim lip to the string, and then the back there's more. So yeah, it would be towed out in the front because there's less distance in the front. So you can definitely see that here. The wheel is straight right now, and then if we look at this side, um, not as noticeable, like that. Um, so my oil spill, what had happened is, uh, this is the Magnus stainless steel one, and it doesn't really filter the greatest, so I switched to the Amsoil one. Um, but that one, the threads on, where the thread's in, it's actually deeper into the oil filter, so there's less threads catching. So I think what I did is I actually threaded the stud onto the oil filter and then threaded the whole assembly onto the housing, which is a bad idea. So this is fine for now. I've got two different studs coming, one from a BMW and one from a Nissan. They both should be 20 by 1.5. You can see it's still like dripping from last night. There's just so much oil in the bumper and everywhere. Um, so I'm going to try those, see if those work with the AMS oil filter and maybe OEM one because I don't want to use this anymore. Um, I did a couple oil reports and it just it doesn't filter good enough essentially is what it comes down to. It flows great for race purposes but um, we either want to use the AMS oil one preferably. Those I can get for, I don't know, I think it's like 14 bucks with um, some kind of discount. Usually the 20, 20 to 30, but um, I think those are rated best overall. So I'm going to fix that. Everything else looks good. Um, the pipe came together well. <clears throat> Let me show you uh, this bracket here. So my bracketry here, this is essentially just securing the downpipe and the turbo to the block. So there's no um, chance of manifold cracking or bending, flexing, anything. It really takes the weight off everything. So that worked good. Clearance is super tight in here, but it clears the pan and everything else. Um, the heat shield, it clears that. Um, one downside I noticed is that, uh, oh, this is a new bracket here for the hanger. Um, I mounted, so I mounted the pump to the floorboard basically, and there is sound deadening on the inside, like that thicker material that they uh, glue down, but it's super loud, even with the carpet and, because I have the thicker carpet with the sound deadening on it, it just transmits through the cabin really, really loud, so... <sighs> I don't know if I'm going to try some, I, don't, I can't even think of what I would do. I don't really want to lower this down anymore. If I had like a standoff plate, maybe I can do some Dynamat or more insulation, or maybe I could even insulate this bottom portion too. But it's, it's pretty loud, even with the seat in there and the carpet and the sound deadening. So we'll see. Um, as far as my toe adjustments, like I said before, you can either use this for a little bit of adjustment. I mean, we might get an eighth to a quarter inch toe in or toe out with this. Um, but if we need to do more, we simply remove this bolt and remove this lower arm here. And then we can pull this arm out of the, uh, the subframe. 
So then we have basically infinite adjustment here. We just unscrew this joint and then uh, more toe or less toe, depending. And uh, they do, um, let me grab what I'm looking for here. These are only a couple bucks each, um, but the same, the Volk Metal Craft has these cool covers, dust covers. So once I do the final adjustments, I'll put these nice covers on there just to protect them a little bit more. But just a nice little thing to have, a nice feature, just to finalize everything and make it look good. So don't worry about my welds. I hate welding. Um, it gets the job done, but I'm by no means a, a perfect, uh, you know, dime layer, as they say. It's just, I don't know. It's just a frustrating process to me because... Um, if it doesn't lay down right, then you got to grind it off again, and prep is uh, a lot of work and all that, but whatever. Moral of the story is, everything's done, everything's solid. Um, it's, it's really nice. I'm really happy. I'm going to throw probably two nuts on um, this piece here, just to hold that. It is threaded, tapped out, but throw a nut in there. And then uh, once this is all done, the car's driving straight, the toe is good, then finally I'm going to work on this chassis, uh, chassis brace. So, like I said, this, I mean, the exhaust itself is lower than, like, the exhaust is, like, right here, and it doesn't really catch on anything. So we've got the space. We've got an inch or two or three to play with here to drop a bar down. And then just run it tight along here just straight up to that control arm i think that's uh what i'm gonna do and it's basically just a straight shot as well so um and then maybe i can even sell like a partial kit uh, maybe i can make uh but again i'm not good at welding so maybe not <laughs> but uh we'll probably just make a little piece of washer to fit under this nut and then an um, inch and a half, maybe, if that fits in there. A little tube, drop down, hollow, so we can still get the nut on. And then from that tube piece, we'll weld on the, uh, the brace all the way up. So, that's it, guys. That is it. Um, thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah, if you have any questions or anything else, let me know things I'm gonna secure up there like the e-brake cables and whatnot but it's good to go thanks everyone and until next time